Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you my first crack at making an aluminum melting furnace. Um, so this first design is super basic. Uh, all it is is an old uh, charcoal chimney there on the right. Uh, and I've got a couple of bricks to hold things upright and then a couple of fire bricks on top of those to uh, insulate from the regular bricks. So um, once this is fully uh, aflame, I'm going to move it on top of the fire bricks uh, and then we'll put a uh, uh, air source underneath it. So to melt aluminum you need a very high temperature that uh, normally can't be achieved by uh, just charcoal alone. I've gotten really close. Uh, I've gotten uh, the aluminum to sort of weaken with a normal charcoal fire but um, that doesn't quite cut it so we need to up the temperature uh, by adding an air source uh, and I'm gonna provide that with an old hair dryer uh, and so once I get this set up, I'll show you uh, how I'm going to do that. All right, so here's my setup. We've got the charcoal fire in there, um, and I've got an old hair dryer uh, taped to a PVC pipe that has an elbow on the end that's pointing up. So the air from the hair dryer is going to get directed through the pipe, uh, up the elbow, and in through the uh, charcoal there, which should uh, increase its heat output quite a bit. My crucible is going to be this stainless steel cup that I found in the uh, camping section and I put a little bit of aluminum foil in there to start with. My plan is to use this to melt uh, aluminum cans, soda cans, um, but I want to have a little bit of foil in there. I think this will, will provide uh, a good contact area of aluminum around the edges so it should melt hopefully pretty good and then I'll get a little bit of liquid in there and then I can start feeding cans into it uh, and they'll sit in a liquid and, and should melt nicely. So let's stick this in here and uh, let's see what happens when we get the air going. So this is the maiden voyage of this thing, so I, who knows if this is actually going to work or not, <laughs> but we'll find out. Um, so we'll just keep this running for a bit uh, until something happens, and I'll let you know. So about a second after I turn the video off, this it immediately has melted the aluminum. This is pretty awesome. So I'm going to go grab some cans and throw them in and see what happens. You can see the uh, bottom of this thing is red hot now. So let's uh, start feeding cans in and see how this goes. Of course, it's going to burn off the uh, label and the plastic on the inside as well. You can see it discoloring. <laughs> And there it goes. Wow. That is amazing. I did not expect this to work this well. Here goes another one. Okay, so I guess you got to be careful doing that. <laughs> I imagine that was a steam explosion. So I'm just going to keep on feeding cans into this thing until I run out. Alright, I went ahead and turned the air off. I got uh, six cans plus a couple of sheets of aluminum that I had laying around uh, in there. Now, it's all molten. So I'm going to take uh, this and pour it into my mold over here, which is just a, a pie sheet basically. And I hit one side of it with a blowtorch to try to get rid of the non-stick coating. Um, in case that did anything bad. So you can see we got molten aluminum in there. So I'm going to pour that out into the mold. Quite a bit of slag from those cans, which is kind of what I expected. So here's my solidified blob of aluminum. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to quench it in some water for no real reason, except that I just can't wait to touch this thing. So here we go. <laughs> that 
there you go. Solid aluminum. So I brought this back into the lab to show you the, uh, the crystals. Now that there's a little bit better lighting, maybe you'll be able to see the crystals a little bit better. You can see they look really feathery uh, and they all of course intertwine and uh, they sparkle a little bit differently just because they're all aligned differently. So that's really cool that it's solidified like that. Um, and you can see on the back, you really don't see much of that. Now I'm betting because it cooled a lot faster, you know, because it's in contact with the, uh, the, the um, metal surface. So that's going to draw a lot of the heat away. And you see there's some feathery regions on the sides. So like I said before, this is an incredibly simple design, and uh, you can see that it's already sort of falling apart. The uh, hair dryer's kind of falling out of the duct tape here, so I need to figure out a better way to secure that. Uh, and then, as I suspected, the elbow at the end is already getting scorched, so I'll have to replace that with a metal one, I imagine, and maybe put some insulation between that and the connector here. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of slag left in there. Uh, I'll have to get that out once that fully cools. But uh, all in all, I mean, this didn't hardly cost me anything. I had to go buy the, the cup was about $5. The piping uh, was probably 8 or $9. The hair dryer was free. Uh, and the charcoal chimney was free, too, because that was a gift. And it's old, so I'm not using it for anything else anyway. So I'm fairly amazed that this was actually able to do the job. But uh, there you go. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.